ask for help. It's a powerful tool for your personal growth. It's a powerful tool, okay? And remember, it's okay to ask for help. It's a courageous step, it's a bold move, and it helps with your own growth as well. And lastly, just always remember, asking for help is a sign of strength and not of weakness. Not one of weakness, okay? So sisters, misters, please ask for help. Hello, hello. Yeah, we're here again. Let's do our GP jabber. <laughs> I almost didn't make it, <laughs> but yeah, here I am. And before I go in and dive and drive into it, as usual, you know, I think I said it in my last episode, what you appreciate, appreciate. It's my new thing. <laughs> it's my new thing. And I'm trying so hard to appreciate good things, to zoom into good things and great things. And oh my goodness, as it is, it's looking like we will even we're definitely going to hit 600 before the end of December. But I'm hoping and I'm wishing, you know, let's, you know, we could do 700, right? <laughs> you know, a girl can wish. What do you guys think? A girl can wish, right? A big thank you and shout out to all of you sharing this podcast. To those of you that have reached out and to those of you just, you know, silently loving it. I love you all and I appreciate you. Thank you for listening. For those of you that reached out to me to confirm that it's not just my sisters and my mom, and my, you know, and potentially my brother listening to this, I want to say a big thank you to you guys. And I'm, I'm, I'm sending you warm, really, really warm hugs because it's cold these days, man. So if you're not getting hugs, like I'm sending you some virtual love, like I'm sending you virtual love. I think I need more hugs myself, you know, but I'm sending you some, just some from my side. Okay. So hopefully you're feeling it right there. But thank you guys so much for listening and for tuning in and for sharing it with your loved ones and well wishes. But today, <laughs> we're cool enough for my village people, innit? Today, village people, they've sent me. They sent me to you guys. They did. They sent me. They sent me. And they wanted me to ask a question, a very important question. I think this question is very important. It's very important. And it's just been, it's been, yeah, rolling around in my head for a couple weeks now. And I just didn't know how to put it together to come and talk to you all about it. It's about asking for help. Do you know how to ask for help or are you always in survival mode? That's what they asked me to come and ask you guys. Yeah. Are you always in survival mode? I can do it myself. I've got a COVID. I've got all my 10 toes and 10 fingers and I've got this. I'm so happy for you that you've got this. For those of you that don't need help, is there anyone out there? Anybody there? that don't need help. And even if you need help and you just believe, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep it to myself. I'm just going to keep it within myself and I'll just keep swimming through it. Survival mode 24 seven. To those of you doing it, because obviously you maybe have no choice. I don't know, but hopefully whatever we're going to be discussing tonight will help you understand that you have a choice and you don't always have to be in survival mode. It doesn't have to always be that you are in survivor mode. Ask for help. It's important. It's needed. We all need it. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. We need to reiterate that. We need to echo it. We need to continue to say it. We need to repeat it. Put it on repeat. And yes, I've been on both sides of the coin. Ask for help and you get thrown back at your face or you get a no. Ask for help and get so much love that you believe you actually even deserve. I have been on both sides or given help or helping someone and no response back, you know, not getting the appreciation that you want. Helping someone and they're showering you with so much thanks and appreciation. I've been on both sides. I think four different sides to it, isn't it? But when you're on that other side that we all like to be on, you know, when you ask for help and you actually get wonderful people to surround you, lift you up and actually help you, I know the feeling is satisfying. It's liberating. Yes, it is. All of those things. And if you also provide, you know, support someone, lift someone up, you provide help to them and they can appreciate it, I know the feeling as well. I know how you feel. You've impacted, you've helped, you've supported someone, right? Yeah, we're all in the same box. After all, we're human, sisters, misters. I'm pointing at you right now. Like, yeah, you can't see me. Yeah, 
today I'm fully dressed anyways. I'm fully clothed today. I'm not wearing my PJs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm pointing at you, sisters, misters, wherever you are. Are you asking for help or you're running on survivor mode 24 seven? And this is your reminder. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a courageous step towards growth and liberation from the confines of a survival mode. That's what asking for help is. You're actually bold. You're courageous. You're smart. You don't want to die young. That's why you're asking for help. So don't ever feel the need to continue to run on a survival mode. Your battery will go down. We talked about it during my last episode, right? Exhaustion. If your aim and goal is for you not to be exhausted, sisters, misters, then you've got to ask for help. I know, and I know it. Like I said before, sometimes you get that no. Yeah, sometimes the no comes. Sometimes whoever is telling you no, probably trying to build some boundaries for themselves then, as well. Sometimes they're probably trying to save their own mental health. Sometimes they've been beaten twice and, and you know, we were once beaten twice shy. Sometimes the, their light bulb is just out. Sometimes they are, they're flowing on low current. It's also not enough for you to ask for help and someone says no to you and you, you know, you tag them as the enemy or not from, or they are village people. Just like you want peace. People looking for peace as well. And don't always think people exactly what they show they are on social media. I could be counting cash that I'm supposed to use to pay my rent or my whatever. And it looks like, oh my goodness, she loaded. I'm probably broke. I could be wearing Gucci that, you know, probably got like seven years ago. But who knows? Nobody knows. Maybe I wear the brooch like once every two years. I could be carrying that bag that belongs to my big sister. That is actually loaded. It could be my mama's gold I'm wearing. You never know. But I've taken a picture with it and you're thinking, oh my goodness. Or that particular minute, that seconds when things are actually rosy in the house and we're loving up on each other. We take a picture and we posted it. But maybe 97.9% .9 of the time, we're at each other's throat backing down our, you know? You don't know that. So people are not exactly the way they seem on social media. It's not. Forget it. It's not. It's a lie. So ask for help. I know, I know, I know. Asking for help, yes. It's tangled up with a sense of vulnerability. You're being vulnerable with someone else. And sometimes, yeah, you get it thrown at you. Learn from it. Not learn from it to then put yourself into forever survival mode. The truth is you just can't do it on your own. A tree can't make a forest. A tree cannot make a forest. And remember I said whenever I come on here and it feels like I'm, you know, I'm the teacher with the cane and like waving it in each, everyone's face, like talking at them. I'm literally talking at myself. I'm the first person on that row, that first row. You come into this class that I'm, this class I'm giving right now. I am the first, that girl, you can see that girl in front. With a front seat, with a pen and paper writing, that's me right there. So it's not because I'm doing this right or I'm always asking for help when I actually need it and not waiting until I drown before I ask for help. It's not because of that. That's not why I'm, I'm doing this tonight. But to remind myself as well that being vulnerable is not the end of the world. And even if your vulnerability gets thrown back at you, you're vulnerable with somebody. I said something to someone. I think I went to dinner with a friend. Um, the other day and um, we we're talking and I'm like, yeah, if you going through stuff, right. And uh, maybe you discuss it with your mate and stuff, then there's some, or they don't reciprocate. Like you would have them understand and things like that. Then th that person's probably not, not your mate, but uh, try as much as possible to also remember the good times. Now things change. Change is one of the most constant thing in life. Right? So you could be best mate today and maybe tomorrow not best mate anymore, right? That's possible. That's it. There's a possibility of that. But remember the good times. And if you're measuring, measure, put, put some good measurement on the good times as well, because nobody is perfect and we make mistakes, right? Mistakes are bound to happen. So nobody is perfect. You make mistakes too. You sure make mistakes. No matter how good, how righteous, how religious, how whatever you are 
you make mistakes. Look at that lady. In, you, look at that sister in the mirror, the mister in the mirror. Look at yourself. You make mistakes. Let's try as much as possible not to be quick, to give up on people because they've made one mistake. And something I was listening to today, T.D. Jakes was saying that it's very easy for people to point fingers because they recognize the same habit, the same situation in themselves, right? They recognize it. That's why they're able to call someone out for the same issue. Because seriously, how do you even know it's a bad habit? <laughs> because you've been trying to kill yourself. You've been trying to work on yourself to make sure you don't make those mistakes anymore. So why crucify someone else that is making the same mistake? What we were talking about tonight is about asking for help, embracing vulnerability and breaking free from survivor mode. If that's the mode your ancestors, misters, Christmas is just around the corner. The year is about to come to an end. If you're one of them ones that put, you know, one of them people that believe in new year resolution or goals and things like that for the new year, try and put this on your list. You don't have to continue to be in survival mode. I know you're afraid of being seen as incapable, that you're weak. So you're trying to handle everything yourself. But unfortunately, you can only do what you can. You can only do what you can. And some of you, you're limiting yourself. You're limiting your purpose. You're limiting your Yourself, generally, in all aspects, any how you can think it, your relationship, you're limiting, you're giving up on that relationship, you're giving up on that job, you're giving up on whatever it is, because you're not asking for help. I know it takes courage to admit. It takes courage to admit that you don't have all the answers. Sisters, misters, you don't know it all. But the truth about asking for help is that it strengthens connections. I don't know who you're friends with right now. Hopefully you're not friends with village people and your group of friends, you know, sisters and misters, arena. Hopefully they're wonderful connections for you. When you ask for help from those that you're talking to, from those that you're friends with, from your mates, it should strengthen your connections. It should build your relationships, make it better. It should allow for growth collectively. It should. That's the purpose of it. Because you're being vulnerable with the person. You're putting yourself out there. And yes, I said it before. Some of you put yourself out there and it's been thrown back at your face. It's cost you detrimental um, and, and things like that. It's not enough for you to give up on the all population of human beings, right? There are good people out there. I know a couple. If you're thinking right now, so how do I get over this? How do I come out of survivor mode? How do I open my attitudes towards it to ask for help and everything? First and foremost, if you're listening to this right now, if it's seven people, four people, five people, 10 people, whatever you are, what, how many people, doesn't matter what number is, let's start from normalizing the act of asking for help. Let's normalize it. Just like you wake up and you breathe in, you breathe out. Just like you know it's dark and it's time to go to bed. Maybe not winter time these days, right? <laughs> if you go to bed at 4 p.m., I don't know who your bus is. <laughs> Better be the bus. But do you get what I mean? Let's create an environment where, you know, asking for help, asking for assistance is not seen as weakness, but as strength. Let's create that environment. I wrote an article this week when I posted it on, um, on LinkedIn about, um, what's it called again? About emotional intelligence, right? Creating an environment where workplaces understand what it is to actually be black, be colored person. In the midst of all whites, you're the only colored person in that room. There's a level of cultural understanding that needs to be brought in place so you don't feel left out. The same thing we need to do when it comes to asking for help. Let's start to normalize it so people don't feel like, oh, those that ask for help, they're asking for help because they're weak. Another way is let's practice self-compassion. Let's be empathetic towards one another. Everyone needs support. You see that person you be eyeing on social media that you feel like, oh my goodness, their life is perfect. I don't want to believe there's anyone behind this blue uh, the microphone or listening to my voice right now. You believe what you see out there or whatever you see anywhere is perfection. No, no. People got stories. People got things going on. You see, there are good, there is good, there is bad for a reason. If there was no bad in this world, the word bad will not exist. It won't exist. It will not even make it to the dictionary. We will have no need for it. 
We w- there will be no need for it. But because there is need for it, that's why the word exists in the first place. So there is good and there is bad. And we're still not perfect, right? We talked about it earlier. Okay? So normalize it and self-compassion. Let's put that forward first. So people will start to see that, you know, they can break free from that survival mentality. And if it's in your personal life, generally, you know, you want to shift from that mindset. One thing that is very important, either personally or even in your professional life, how you can navigate from it, build trust. It's very important for us to build trust. Build trust with the people you know, with that mate, the people you know, the group of friends you've got. Building trust is very important. Communicate openly and honestly. Sometimes I feel like recently something has happened to me that I feel like, oh my goodness, I'm becoming too vulnerable for my liking. I'm becoming too vulnerable. But I asked for friends. I prayed for friends. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I remember, I I think I've said it a couple of times on this podcast, um, when I was living in Belgium by myself, um, and I'll talk to myself. I'll talk to the mirror. I will talk to myself. I'll be cooking and I'll be talking to myself. Yeah, cuckoo. Yeah, whatever you call it. But I'll talk to myself because I really did not really have friends, 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 friends like that. I had friends. I had friends, but I had people that I knew. But maybe because we're younger at the time as well, we really did not understand the definition of what friendship should be and what it should be about. And because I also lived so far away from a lot of the people that I know, it made it difficult for me to actually have that kind of... Now, I want to go on dinner. and I'm, You know what, guys? I'm, I'm balling this December. I'm, I'm, the goal is to enjoy you. The goal is that I'm going to enjoy you throughout December. I've got some dinner dates booked like back to back, like back to back from next week. Like, even during the week, I'm going to be going on dinner dates. It's a festive period. It's a happy days. So let's enjoy. Actually, from Sunday, I got a dinner, um, dinner date with a group of women um, from church on Sunday anyway. So, yeah, it's going to start from Sunday. Let's start partying on, from Sunday. Yeah, just wondering what my bank account will look like anyways at the end of December. We still need to leave and survive in January, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah, you get the gist. Build trust is very, very important. Communicate openly and honestly about your needs and limitations because you're the only one thinking people think you're perfect. People in their right senses. I hope you know the right people. I hope you know, not for my village people, but but not village people, right? Because if you know the right people, they 100%, on, I, am, I assure you, they know you're not perfect. They know you have your own limitations. They know you're weak. They know some things that you are not so good at, Okay. But if we start to normalize it, people will start to feel less ashamed, you know, of asking for help. Creating a supported network as well will help. And one of the most important part of this is be willing and ready to reciprocate it as well. Ooh, there's something about humans that I know. There's something about people that I know, you know? It's give and take. It's two-way street. I can continue to pour into you and you have nothing to pour into me. Sisters, misters, like... Don't be stingy with your love. Hug a sister. Hug a mister. Say I love you to one another. Say thank you. Ask if they're okay. I've got one of my foster sisters. She always says it every now and again. She, she's like, oh, you've not changed. You're always asking if someone is okay. Yes. I grew up asking that question all the time because I needed people to ask me if I was okay. So now I can ask you 10 times in a day. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> I'll ask you. My my daughter, my my children, my housemates. I call them my housemates. My housemates even know that. And my sister, my daughter is one of my daughters, and my eldest daughter. She's starting to get that habit as well now. She comes back from school. She goes upstairs to change. Comes back downstairs after she said hello, mom. Good afternoon, and all of that stuff. She comes back downstairs and she's like, mom, are you okay? And I'm in the kitchen and she's like, mom, are you okay? Before I realize, oh my goodness, that's me. She's picking it up because I'm always like this. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Right? Let's just share some love. Stop huttering your love. Is it huttering? I can't pronounce that word. But stop keeping all the love to yourself. Put it out there so you can get back in return as well. You can pick from the cups you're feeling. Because you can't continue to just take and take for yourself and expect someone to want to feel you when you need it. Give and take. Give and take. If there are no cups you're feeling right now, you will suffer it when you need someone to fill your cup. That's just the truth. 
Embrace vulnerability and see asking for help as a strength, not a weakness. I want you to remember something tonight or whenever you're listening to this. Sisters, misters, we are all in this together. No one has got it figured out. So seek support. Ask for help. It's a powerful tool for your personal growth. It's a powerful tool, okay? And remember, it's okay to ask for help. It's a courageous step. It's a bold move. And it helps with your own growth as well. And lastly, just always remember, asking for help is a sign of strength and not of weakness. Not one of weakness, okay? So sisters, misters, please ask for help. You can't do it all alone. You've got this, I know. I congratulate you and I'm happy for you. But while on that journey, don't just continue to pull that phase of survivor mode. I've got this by myself. Ask someone to help and support you at some point. One way or the other, you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to go on that journey alone. A big shout out to a very good friend of mine that always remember to invite me or to call me into rooms that I probably wouldn't even be in when it comes to speaking engagements. I want to use this opportunity to say, I appreciate you. I love you. And thank you for being a wonderful sister to me. Thank you. And God bless you. Have a good night, guys. Okay. Good morning. Have a good afternoon. Whenever you're listening to it, you know what? Don't be a village person and correct my have a good night. I'm going to bed now. I'm going to have a drink before I go to bed. And should I still have a meal? I think I still need to put food in my belly. Anyways, good night, guys. Enjoy the rest of your time and talk to you again soon. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to share, comment, give us some stars. Please don't, don't, you know, be begging. And now I'm asking for help. I'm I'm literally begging you guys. Don't just listen. Put some stars there. At least, even if it is just one, at least we will know you came. You came, you listened. Just do something. Show us some love. Show your sister some love. Show me some love. Go onto my Instagram page as well. Did I tell you that we started an Instagram page? That Instagram page is looking malnourished, guys. Please nourish it with your love. Show me some love on Instagram. I am begging. Oh, it doesn't take you a lot. Share the page. Follow us, you know? Okay, the us is me and the village people, you know, that are sitting around this table right now with me. Follow me on Instagram. Be nice. Like and comment when I post stuff. I'm just begging. I'm just, you know, show some love to your sister. (laughs) Anyways, have a great evening, guys. Bye for now. (laughs) 